Hello and welcome to Warblog. Today we're looking at a sort of particular scenario. Um, it's five scenarios. We're looking at the Islamist insurgency in Mozambique. Um, now, basically, I, I, I did five of these all in one hit. So it's a sort of a bit of a cheat when it comes down to the quantity of new games. Um, I'm quite happy to do it that way. Um, in for, for a reason I'll explain in a second, but there they are, there's, so there's the five of them. Um, just to sort of maybe touch on why I sort of did it that way, but without going into detail why I did it that way right this moment. Essentially, well, let's, let's just get into it. Essentially, as you can see, I'm, I'm producing all these sort of wars and things like this. And so there is, amongst all these other things, this, the Islamist insurgency in Mozambique. Now the thing is, before I did this five, this entry didn't exist. So for example, the next one in the list is the Anglophone insurgency or something. And you can see it's not in here. So to put that into perspective, this is my message board, which I am actually sort of trying to develop. Um, I recently was searching into that for something, I can't remember, some sort of blog or I think I was looking for war blog um, and you can't find my site for some strange reason everything that's called war blog but um, I found another site and it wasn't anything to do with modern war, it was more basically some English in, in England uh, author who's written a number of books on I think the, the South African wars um, I can't remember what they're called, it runs in South Africa, the, not the Boer, yeah, the Boer War, or, no, no, not the Boer War, the, the one in South Africa, and, and a couple of others, and, and he basically had two forums for um, for that period, or for Victorian period wars, or something along those lines, and I thought, hang on, that looks really interesting, this looks like a sort of place where people interested in that particular period of war can go and, and on a forum and talk, so I basically created this forum here, well, I mean, I've always had this, but this was just the page on the forum. So, and I've changed all the stuff here. This is where adverts should be. I've got the ad blocker in, so you can't see it. But I've changed the sort of format of this. So, this is all where I've been adding things. You can see I haven't done anything since November 14, whatever, October 18, etc., etc. I mean, it's not that I've given up on it, but you know, I sort of, I've got a lot of these social media things that I do, you know, I, I, I deal with, I tend to sporadically. But anyway, so I came back and I thought, that's a sort of good idea. So what I then did, I redesigned the board to go back. Instead of just having one thing, I've got now lots of boards. And I went through the Wikipedia thing, getting all of the boards. And so, I, as you can see, I've got something for the 2018 Armenian Azerbaijani clashes. I've got something for the Iraqi insurgency, uh, but this one was blank, so I did it. And so when you click in there, in theory, what people can now do is they can go in, and as you see, I've only got one post. This is one sort of thing. Yeah, this is one post uh, with two views, and obviously when you go into it, because there's just not a lot there, it's hard to see. What the hell? That scared me. Um, this is, um, so, so obviously, you know, you could reply to this and say, you know, extend the conversation. So clearly it's, it's got a long way to go, um, with regards to developing as a forum. But as you can see, the next one, this is why I mentioned it, is the Anglophone crisis. Now, they go back in sort of date order, so this is all quite recent. The only thing to say is I haven't completed this yet in the sense that got a lot of these already done. So as you scroll down, you can see I've done Operation Barcane, which is something I did recently. Um, we've got the, uh, the car, Central African Republic Conflict. Um, but, you know, if you scroll down here, you'll see that there are sporadically, you know, I've got something with Chaddy and more, but I've, you know, some of these I've actually, for example, I do have scenarios for the First Iberian Civil War. Um, I think I've got down to about sort of you know, the first Liberian civil war. So I don't, I don't have the first Liberian civil war. 
and then we'll have an ivory coast civil war. So basically, there's another one that, that I, I can do. Um, but as you go down here, I'm pretty sure I've got a war of Dagestan in here. Yeah, war of Dagestan. So basically, what I could do is I've only got one game for it. Um, you know, that, that sort of is, I don't want to get bogged down in too much of this. But the thing is, I could put that list in there. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get a, something for every single one of these entries. And this is basically, I just went through, it took a couple of hours. I went through and got all the wars from the Wikipedia list. It goes all the way back down to you know, 1945, basically, the end of the Second World War. So you've got the Vietnam War there, um, the 48 Israeli War, 45 War in Vietnam, Korean War, Iran Crisis. It might not necessarily all be in order of Paraguayan Civil War, Prince Rebellion. So essentially what I'm going to try and do, to some extent, is start developing this. It's not just a case of getting a little list. You know, the whole idea is that, and if you're interested, you know, you can go there. To be quite honest, I'm not going to be sort of going in there and sort of actively getting excited about things that people might be saying. Um, it's one of these things that, you know, if other people feel that they'd like to start talking about the dual Islam insurgency or the Infinity War, they can come here and there's a forum where they can maybe start writing things. So, you know, it'd take a lot of time to get, a lot of momentum to get a forum like this, you know, actually active. But it doesn't matter, you know, this is what I'm doing and, you know, in five years' time, you know, I might have something for everything. That's my aim, but not only that, to actually be able to then, you know, to, to talk to people or communicate, you know, sort of, for example, in some of these more recent ones, you know, I might actually find a new book on the Sino-Vietnamese War or a book on the 79 Khrushchev uprising and I can actually add it as a post or there might be something or a film on it or, you know, whatever, it's a forum. So the whole idea is you've got this massive forum if you consider that, you know, that someone could spend a lot of time talking about the Falklands War know a lot to say about it and that that could be the only thing that they had ever visit in the site but it could have millions of posts or you know a, you know quite a few posts um and in its own right could be you know of interest so i don't want to sort of really go too far down this but essentially in light of that i then looked at clearly the um the islamist insurgency in mozambique i looked at the um the wikipedia page for it and you know, this is the Islamic Society in Mozambique, an ongoing conflict in the Cabo um, and Delgado province, Mozambique, uh, between the Ansar al Sunnah, uh, an Islamist militant group attempting to establish an Islamic state in Mozambique, and the Mozambican security forces, etc., etc. And then it's got, um, you know, obviously all the usual stuff, um, but then it's got this sort of timeline of things that happened. and. So what I've done, I went through this and I thought, well, what's going to sort of give me a, a representative, you know, engagement for this period? Um, and I think the first thing I spotted was this one, um, you know, because they seem to have done quite a lot of damage there. They, they destroyed a church of 27 houses, 27 homes. Um, they killed a couple of people. And then there's this one. Um, you know, not, uh, the security forces attack by air and sea, um, um, uh, Mitombati, um, uh, leaving 50 dead. They basically described it as, as a stronghold. This one we're going to look at first, I think. Uh, sort of half intent to look at all of them. But, so I could have had done some of these other ones, but the thing is, they're not really, I mean, you know, this one maybe looks interesting. A pre-dawn skirmish took place between the group and government forces in a fish, fishing village. Um, as a result, many locals fled the village. It doesn't really sound like an engagement. And a lot of these are not really that. So I, basically, the five that I picked out, including two, two from 17, two from 18, and one from this year, this one here, um, where they go back. It says Piki. But this is Paki. I think it's the same place. Basically, they attack it on 21st of September, killing 12 people. They attack it again. They both seem significant, but I didn't realise that it's been quite hard to make two scenarios out of that when they're almost the same. The only thing it does say here is that, um, well, that there are actually, well, 
and they dismembered these people. Um, and this other one, they, they cut them up. Um, there are some other articles which we'll have a look at. Um, state what well, one of the differences in this one was they stopped sleeping in the village for fear of these you know, people coming back. And um, so we've got these five scenarios, and so that's where we're at really. So I've created these five scenarios there. So this is the latest one, um, and that's the first one that I did there. So, so that's what I'm trying to do, and that's why I've sort of done these five things. And, and it was an easy hit, you know, they're not massive war games. You're not really going to get, it's not going to be too difficult. The map is the same on all of them, you see. And the thing is, because I didn't really, I did the map, it said basically that the, um, the, the Ansal Sunnah forces are active in the uh, Cabo de Gado province of Mozambique, which is in the top northeastern corner of Mozambique. So I did the map based around the province, but when you start to look at it, most of the things are around here. I mean, when I put Paki there, you know, I was just trying to make a, put some variance in there. I could have put it further down here, but, you know, basically I didn't have to use this sort of map. But even so, I think it's still worthwhile because it gives you a clear idea of the the scope of Cabo de Gado province um, as, as a whole, which is marked by this red line and obviously there's the border with Tanzania there. And so that's sort of pretty much where we're at. Um, now, what I'm going to do What I'm going to do is I'm going to play this one. Now, one thing I just wanted to point out, I, obviously I always put these things into Twitter, so I, 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 I bet, just to re reiterate, I, I do feel a bit of a cheat that I've got these five games, and sort of, well, because, you know, it's sort of think, oh, it's all quantity over quality, and, you, you know, I'm forever sort of looking at this thing here, now I've got over you know, 550 games, you know, and I just bump that up by five really quickly. Whereas some of these other ones, I'm still, you know, they're still sort of trying to be done because they're so big and complex and they'll take up, you know, more time in their own right than these did. But whenever I do them again, I, I've got a habit of putting them into Twitter and, and Facebook. Sometimes I do other things in the field, sometimes I put them into there. But, um, you sort of look, so I put it in there. And there's if we look at that well, that's strange because when I did it last time there was a lot more. I'm half conscious of the fact that we might see something sensitive, but um, other than the fact that it gets sod all, this is not a lot. Once I've got like 2,000 impressions in one day, and I thought the world had ended. No one's really interested in any of this stuff, but if we look at Cabo Delgado. So you get a sense of, I mean, to be quite honest, I'm not a Twitter aficionado, um, you know, not, I don't really do a lot of it, but I'm sort of picking things up in the sense that it's a lot about the keywords. I always put the keywords in there just because I'm like that anyway, but I don't put them in the text. That's sort of irrelevant. And what I'm trying to sort of get to is, A, you can see a lot of this stuff. So obviously these people are talking about a non-government organization, talking about marine area of Cabo de Gallardo, Cabo Delgado, etc., etc. Now, see, I don't know whether it's... it's uh, So obviously you've got this thing about hands, and I hope that's not going to get in the way of what I want to show you, because when I did this, it's quite interesting really, because you get, there's clearly a sort of world of people with an interest, and a much 
deeper rooted interest than, than my interest in, in this region. You know, it's a very real place. I mean, there's probably some high significance to these pictures of things like food. Um, you know, so there's there's a map to give you an indication. There's a Cabo de Gado. So there's the region. And as, as you can see, I've got the geography to some extent right because it says stressed. So it's stressed. I would say that's sort of like more of an emergency up there, but maybe it's talking about the current food security. So it's stressed up there, probably due to the military activity. And down here, natural causes maybe. But I remember this one. So we're nearer the mark. I remember that as well. Um, what I'm looking for is something very specific, and because it is a, there you go now, it's probably all changed. Um, basically, a picture of a mud hut. There. So there's we there we got this picture, and hopefully. So it's gone now. That's frustrating. What there was, so there's a picture of a dead body. So this is 280 people have died since we've been in the insurgency in Cabo de Gaida. So this is the this is the reality of what we're talking about there. So and what I saw and what I sort of wanted to point out was that in between this picture and that picture, sort of almost where this is, there was a big advert for um, for Mercedes cars, and it had basically it started off with this sort of this panorama of New York City and all these clever, smart, you know, young upwardly mobile people with their mobile phones and a hustle and bustle of, you know, New York life and then the, the luxury or the convenience or the grace and style of buying a new Mercedes car. And it just stuck, struck me as being such a juxtaposition on, in comparison to some of these pictures. I don't want to be melodramatic or anything like that, but it, it was quite odd. And it, it sort of struck me that, um, you, you know, in the light of, um, the fact that, you know, obviously what I do is a game, uh, and, and you know, I'm not worried about that too much at all really. Um, it's sort of, when you start to look at war, and this is what this is all about, and I don't think you can start sort of mincing words or anything like that. There's a lot of them, um, and there's, you know, I mean, I, I've only, this wasn't in my system. Before, so the Islamist insurgency in Mozambique, but you don't hear about it. And I'm not trying to sort of promote it, or, you know, I'm just trying to bring about just to sort of highlight the fact that there's a lot going on in the world that people are just really not that particularly aware of, even though they're on Twitter of all things. Cabo, Cabo Delgado needs you now. Uh, we need justice, peace, and dignity for the people of Cabo Delgado province in Mozambique now. So obviously, you know, I think that the key word that sort of I sort of picked up on there was dignity, and there was this big advert for the Mercedes car right in between it, and it was just such a sort of juxtaposition of, you know, the state of the world. Um, you know, I mean, the thing is, you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything controversial or anything, but you know, there's only so much that people in the West can actually do or, or care for. Um, but it, it's sort of, you know, when you're dealing with these sorts of things, um, you know, it, it becomes quite apparent that you know, these people are on Twitter, and they're probably sitting there on Twitter looking at, you know, their mud huts, and then sort of, you, you know, seeing adverts, I mean, they might not be in their region, seeing adverts for brand new Mercedes cars when, you know, it must be quite odd, I think, being these sorts of people and then being exposed to, Western culture through things like Twitter, but also not just being exposed to Western culture, but being exposed and witnessing Western behaviour, you know, when they sort of realise how little they have or how stressed their environments are due to things like this cropping up. 
So basically, you know, to some extent, that's, that's what we're looking at. And m further, uh, with, with regards to that, um, I'm, I mean, I've always had the same objective with, with war blog, and that's to really sort of cover, you know, all these things, all these wars. So if you say, oh, well, what's that? The, the invasion of Kuwait. Oh, can I have a look at that? What, what, you know, what, what's that all about? Um, but from a military perspective, from the purely um, kinetic perspective, um, and you know, because I, I really don't. Whilst I agree with you know, there are other things to be said, the humanitarian side of things, I think that you know we get there's this this huge sort of effort to sort of ignore the kinetic side of things, the actual strategic on the ground efforts of whatever warring parties are involved. Um, and, and this is really just to provide a solution to that by, in, in hex and in all format, so to speak. And so it's following exactly along the lines that, that I've um, always had it in the intention of taking it. But I've just sort of been reading recently, um, and I'm not going to try and find it because it's, it's probably, probably spent a few minutes faffing around. But there was, there's a couple of, I think this one of them was a site called the History Guy, and it's basically, and there's a few sites like this, and they play historic war games, or they talk about history through war games, or they talk about history in a graphic format. Um, and, and it just sort of struck me that, um, you know, you can sort of present um, almost documentary style narratives about these sorts of things. And now, for example, you know, the Islamist insurgency in Mozambique really isn't that well documented, not because it's um, particularly sort of old or, you know, or, or ignored. It's not particularly big. It's probably, you know, I mean, to say it's Islamist insurgency, you know, you've probably got a mix of criminality in there anyway. Um, and, you know, Africa's, you know, always been inundated with that in one form or another. So, but the thing is, you know, what, what I'm doing with regards to, you know, developing the forum, as I've just explained, uh, and putting it in there, I'm trying to get something for everything so that you can really sit in there and say, okay, Islamist insurgency in Mozambique, what's, what's all that about? I can see, you know, we've got some of these scenarios here. Hopefully what you'll do, and now what I'm trying to sort of build up on is, is although I've been, as I said, I've been doing this in this format for a while, is to, I'm trying to maybe to the next level of sort of trying to, how to put these things together to create a, a continual narrative of what's happening. Um, I've yet to really figure out a way of doing that without just sort of saying, well, here's this battle. Because the thing is, if you miss something, then, you know, there's no real way to know that. But the thing is, you know, in something like this, although these scenarios all look a bit crap, for example, you know, for example, in here, there's not really a anything you can do. You take these units over here, you burn the village down, some peasants run away, some uh, refugees run away, and, th and that's it. You don't get to intervene because you're too far away. Um, there's, it's not really a, you know, but a game in that sense, but hopefully if you think, okay, what's happening with these insurgency in Mozambique, you can be able to look into here and say, well, okay, I can see, along with something as simple as this, that, you know, it started in 17, you can see that most of the things that happen are sort of, you know, little armed attacks, um, um, you know, 10 people, including children, being beheaded in this village, um, six people killed and two seriously injured when terrorists armed with knives and machetes attack a village, you know, I didn't include that as a scenario. You could read this and you could gain an understanding, but, you know, if, 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 Hexagonal format and it's brightly coloured format is more your thing because you understand hexes. You don't really want to spend a million years reading every text. You know, this is where this sort of fits in. But I still think it serves a purpose. So what I'm really trying to do is just cover some, you know, some of the thoughts that I've been experiencing with regards to this. And you know, the fact that I put five up in one go and is it a cheat, so to speak? Well, you know, no, because you can see now graphically that, you know, what's happening out there has been taking place since 2017, and it's all quite small scale, in the sense it's more skirmish level, etc. But one of the things I haven't mentioned in any of this, and it's not particularly that important, but the Russians are now helping the Mozambique government by selling them weapons. 
um, which, you know, I mean, nothing particularly surprising about that. But, you know, as you start to pick these things up, you, you know, you realise, you know, you, you can develop a picture on that. Uh, the thing that struck me about when I looked at this and I started reading through this is that it is an Islamic insurgency uh, by this group. Um, as you can see, their flag is very similar to ISIS. Um, this, there is some sort of connections with these sorts of things in general, um, similar to the Iraqi Sunni insurgent group. Um, but, you know, they're attempting to establish an Islamic state. And when you read you know, a lot of these things, and I don't want to criticize Islam t you know, at all, really, um, they spend a lot of their time beheading people and chopping them up. Um, and it just seems to me that, you know, it, although it's really common sense, two deaths by decapitation, um, you know, although it's sort of common sense, um, you know, the, the, the sort of stuff, I think it sort of puts it into a new perspective for me, because you're so used to them sort of trying to establish their caliphate in Syria and Iraq, and a bit in, you know, Libya. Um, you, you know, it, it makes it realise that this is a, although it's not representing the whole of Islam, it, it is a religious sector that, that is actually, you know, is rampant across the world in various countries, and this one in Mozambique, you know, engaged in this sort of jihad against, you know, what seems to be everyone in the world. Um, trying to create an Islamic state, and it, sort of, it just makes you realize it puts it into perspective that it, there is a problem that is a little larger than I perceived. Because I sort of thought, well, I don't know, I don't want to really get into too much of what I thought, but I did think that the you know, whole situation in Syria and Iraq, whilst they were creating a, a caliphate, was, was to a larger extent all derived from the fact that there was social breakdown in Syria and Iraq and it was, you know, it, could, it was a revolution, a so, civil war of some sort and it just happens that these, you know, the, the ISIS people had, you know, that, that's how they evolved from there. But, you know, when you start to sort of think, well, it's, you know, it's taking effect in Mozambique or whatever, what other sort of third world nation could it take place in? I mean, you know, there will, it happened in part of the Philippines, you know, there was that big siege in that city, I can't remember where. Indonesia, you, you, you know, it, you know, I mean, the breakdown in, in sort of India Pakistan relations, you know, you could take hold in there, you know, there's the Islamic, there's the ISIS in Afghanistan, uh, Boko Haram, which is sort of similarly aligned, um, you know, there's quite a lot of it, and it just seems to communicate to me that the, the geographic spread of, um, of, of the Islamic State and, and their intentions. It's far more significant, and, and it's sort of you know you sort of think well, you consider how what the United States are doing because they get a lot of flack for being sort of you know putting their nose into everywhere, but they are you know helping with the the Nigerian effort against uh, against the, you know Islamic radicalism, um, and they're operating they're operational in, in Somalia, and um, you know when you consider the sort of you know, the scope of how this is, it's like communism, you know, in the 60s and 70s, um, you know, you can sort of see why, you know, that they're trying to sort of fight this, um, and I'm not saying communism was, was sort of comparable or even that bad, but, you know, it was it was the bugbear, it was the, the bogeyman of the time, and, and I think this is now, is, is the same thing. So anyway, but the point is, we've got it covered now, so I'm not really going to be doing much more. So in one here, I've got five scenarios over three years that cover the sort of the itty bitty sort of nature of um, of, of the you know, insurgency in, in Mozambique, um, and obviously, I, you know, to sort of get back onto you know what I was saying, I will be doing. I will be doing bits and pieces. Everyone, I'm not going to strictly go in order, but I think one of the next things I'm going to do is get the Anglophone crisis, whatever that is, and then do this, get something for everything, so that we've got something to say about everything, and people can then actually, because I've, I've got uh, Can We Then Absolute Rebellion already, I know that. Um, but obviously, it's not even flagged up. Some I've got some that haven't been flagged up. I mean, I wrote a note on here, 22nd of December 17, you know, and I have done a lot more work, but even this list, it seems quite long now, is not complete in comparison to to what I've actually got. Um, 
Cam Winner. Yeah, so there you see, I've got that. But all, what I haven't done is flag it up so that it appears in this list of wars. So I've got something for that section already. So it's just a case of tying everything up and then, you know, people could then start talking about it, you know, if they've got some opinions or thoughts on it. But what I'm going to do, I think we need to spend half an hour talking crap, but what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to jump into this one because I think it's the only one that has any sort of a bit more than just the very basics. This is the, basically the, the, um, the government forces doing, it says that the Mozambique security forces doing a, um, they say a paratrooper drop. Um, and I've got them around the wrong way actually. I'm actually going to change that whilst we're speaking in a minute. Okay, I should have updated that now. Hopefully it will be current. So if we go to play, what we'll find is that the first player is the Mozambique Security Forces, so that's that's correct. So basically it says the paratroopers, but I use special forces. I, it, as is uh, the case in a lot of these things, I don't think it's always that clear. Well, I don't think you can always rely on what you read. Um, so we have to do a quick look at that list again. Um, and then come down here maybe. I sort of think, well, we've obviously we've got the list in the Wikipedia, which we've sort of had a look at already, so we know that. Um, and then there's this Wayback Machine, because the article doesn't actually exist. Um, on the internet now, um, and so you know, this is the nature of intelligence and information. That, you know, actually where to find it, and in a lot of these cases, and I haven't actually read all of this, but you've got to read it. And it says paratry because you now what I find a bit maybe hard to under, not so much understand. I sort of more suspect that they're probably special forces. You know, you can't necessarily believe that. I can't imagine them pulling an air operation where they paratroop forces in. It just seems that, you know, while some people do still do that, it's so specific, uh, you know, that I can't imagine that they actually paratrooped in. So I give them a special forces, but that is an assumption on my part. It does say paratroopers and marines in the Wikipedia thing. And it's the archived copy, so it's the one we were looking at there. I haven't read all this through properly. I do speed these things through, but so anyway, I, I've given them special forces. I mean, if it is, if it really came down to it, I could just replace them with power troopers. It doesn't make any difference. Um, I haven't got any transport for them to get them out, but I don't really need that. So basically, you know, obviously, as I pointed out, there there isn't really isn't anything to sort of say about this. I haven't even put the police forces and the units down here. Um, I always like to start off. Away from the unit, so it's not getting any flack. Okay. Let's land. Do we want to attack? Maybe we'll have two. Maybe we'll have six. There's no point in attacking, but we could do an attrition. We did a little bit of damage. Okay. So, the uh, Ensai Al Sunna forces, what do they want to do well? They can't really attack because these stacks are too too big. Um, no point in running away, so we might as well make a stand. And obviously, if they get pushed out, then they'll run away. So, not a lot can be done there. But what we're going to do, we know that once we split up, they'll be able to attack us, but even then, it'll only be a one to one. But I do want to get the bonuses. Oh, 
I don't know how this is going to work out, but I think, or I imagine, that we should get reasonable odds. I mean, let's think it through. It'd be worth six, so that's one to one, two to, maybe a three or four to one, probably a three to one. Six to one. Ah, oh, that's because special forces. Special forces get much bigger odds, especially when they're taking smaller units. So we've got a DE and push them out there. So that would be, yeah, so that was massive odds. Maybe they should be paratroopers. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Okay, well they moved, so they've got that. So basically we can now move in, but we don't have the movement to do that. Um, now that they're out of there, we could attack them again. But that would be only a 2 to 1, possibly a 3 to 1, so I'll do an attrition. 6 damage. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of play it in a semi um, mature sense in in the knowledge that I've spent like 30 minutes talking nonsense. I don't like it to talk like that because I can't get across the river. What I'm trying to do is um, that shouldn't be there. This is one of the main things we've just said. So we've moved them from the map. Mozambique and special forces, special forces can now do their thing. We'll stack up in there. So we destroy the stronghold, and that's it. And that's the game over. So the thing is, again, I, I just feel a little defensive on the fact that you know it's very easy to just pop up lots of small games like this that don't have the core sort of war game value that some of the more bigger and complex games do. Um, and uh, you know it is, it is actually more difficult, especially when I push for time. And this was these are things are so easy. But I think you, you know the point I'm trying to make in that sort of extended diatribe is that you know I do feel it's justified in the sense of the direction of that war blog is and goes in. You know it is a blog about war, you know with historic things, but also what's happening you know today. I mean this one obviously. It's 2017, but this is February 2019. You know, this happened last month, and no one really knows anything about it. Um, what I'm going to do is, I've done that one. I'm going to do this one. This happened before, actually. It's just in the other order. So again, we've got this situation where you sort of think, well, you know, well, there's these police units down here. Um, Okay, so we produced all these refugees. But the thing is, we want to get into there. That's interesting. Can't attack these refugees. I'll have to look into that. We're obviously going to try and run away, but I'm going to leave him there just as an experiment. Yeah, the reason I couldn't do that, I'm going to have to look into these things. I'm not so bothered about it really. Something not right with that. Oh, I know what's wrong. I know exactly what's wrong. I knew I did this. I knew I did it. And I thought I'd looked for it. I put these in there as insurgents, not irregulars. That's why, because insurgents can't attack. And that's why when you go into there, 
it's, it's looking like the insurgent thing, and it even says the insurgent table. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop and just repair that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that one again. I just updated it. I knew, I, knew, I, I had this memory because I did them all at the same time. I did it quite quickly, and I was just thinking insurgents because I always think of them as insurgents, but which is what they are. But the thing is, technically in, the, in this game, insurgents are a very different thing to irregulars, which is what these are. So what I've done, I've reset it so that they're now behaving as irregulars. So when we do the same thing, we should fire up all these irregulars, and we should now be able to attack them if we need to. Which in this case we don't, but we're just going to do it for the hell of it. So it's a DE, which is what you would expect. We push them back. So presumably we chopped up a few people, which I know is mean, and it's probably one of the reasons why not a lot of people like my site. But now we've pushed all these other refugees. But the thing is, this is what's happening um, in that sense. Um, so we've now attacked these two villages, which is you know historic. That's what happened. Um, you know, they did sort of do lots of things to the people, um, burning their houses down and killing a number of people. I think in this instance they killed two people. But anyway, so we've got the refugees. Um, we'll, we will leave them as well. We can't do anything else anyway. So Mozambique Special Forces now, as Mozambique Security Forces turn, and they're blocked by this river. So we're going to just do what we can to move them away. They're probably well off going to there. So he's a, he's a bit stuck, but we're not going to be doing them again. They shouldn't have that little blob up there, should they? The notes of their company. But we do have these units. So these are the police forces. So the thing is, do the police come up there? Well, another thing to note is that I looked at this and sort of, we've got to sort of think of this road network. So all these roads seem to go nowhere. So is it going to be quicker for him to come around there? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could get there. We could go overland. One, two, three, four, five, six. I wonder if it would be quicker to go this way. So we've lost a big moment there, but. And get the same place, one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's just as quick. So that's that turn. But obviously, they, they haven't actually destroyed them yet. The point is, we're not going to attack the refugees because there's no need to do that at the moment. They've done the, the attacking and attacking their need. So if you're a sort of more humanitarianist in, in your outlook, obviously, the, you know, these are grim rep, rep, simulations. But this is what happens, and I think you know a lot of things. You know, it's, it's sort of ignored. I don't really want to sort of go off on a crusade on any of that. You know, it's just objective, and that's my only opinion. It's my only sort of objective, really, to be objective about about what's happening. But you know, this is refu the refugees are a big part of what's happening and a big driver. I mean, I wish I could include a lot of the other things that sort of go into all of this. Um, you, you know, in the it's in particular, with regards to, because we're doing another scenario at the moment um, on the, the Lake Chad initiative, and they're seeking out these insurgents. I always call them insurgents, uh, but in pr practice in this game, would be seeking out the irregulars, the Boko Haram irregulars. You know, how do you do that? How do you model that so you can reflect the sort of the efforts of, you know, trawling? Because in this game, you can see where the where the irregulars are. You know, you can see they're there, and you know where to go. But in theory, you know, you wouldn't. And, and uh, one way of doing that is to actually, when it's the Mozambique Security Forces turn, you can't see them. Although you remember, might memorise they're there, it's actually still an effort to realise that they're there. And you can, especially if you've got a lot of units, you can't actually remember unless you start, you know, cheating, or taking copies of the map or something. So that could work. But the thing is, you know, how to reflect modern warfare, you know, simplistically in, in this sort of format. It's easy to understand and, and to work. But the, the, one of the things about this, and then we've got these troops coming on here now, they've just been initiated, this has been activated, um, is it takes so long for them to get up there. Two, three, four, five. Hmm. 
six, two, three, four, five. Look at that, they both get to exactly the same place. They're starting off in both these places. I thought that this route would be the more direct. But this one, even if you went that way, is exactly the same. But it's still taking them that many turns to get there. They've destroyed these objectives. We've got these units here. One, two, three, four. Well, he's not going any further, is he? Should have stayed on the road, maybe. And now they're going to run away. Okay, and that's it really. I'm not going to take that any further, but that, that's the game. And the others play almost exactly the same. So it, it's hardly a sort of a game game, but I think it should give you an idea of you know, what, they're, what they're doing. They're, you know, they're raising these villages, attacking people, destruct, displacing people, etc, um, etc. Et um, in this latest game, the second Paki Raid, um, this happens over here. Now the refugees are sleeping outside of their village because they're too scared to sleep in their village in case these these come these guys come again. And now what I've done here, I've reflected the sort of the fact that you know the Mozambique government, is, the Mozambique security forces are trying to sort of deal with this. And so we've got this is the strongholds in which we played. We've just played the raising of Chitalo and uh, Makula. Oh no, we just played the, the the raising of these two places actually. Chicola is another one, so these are three objectives. But we've got this mechanized unit hanging around there, we've got these people hanging around here, we've got some police here, and obviously they want to sort of put them right in there, but um, they're now activated and they're now carrying out operations, you know, just to, to get these regulars. But you know, in this instance, they've just appeared here, so we can play that game. And again, it's not going to be that difficult. So the, the refugees are already out of their village. So when we move in there, there's, there is nothing to, to be done. But in this case, we've got obviously quite a lot that we can plow onto that, probably too much. Now, they didn't engage the rebels or the, the insurgents, but obviously in this scenario we have, but it was just an exchange. So, but what we're going to do here, oops, next turn, is run away. So, and we're not going to take it any further. I have actually thought of another system of play similar to moving maps off the board that insert, I think we call insurgents irregulars, will be able to possibly do the same thing. So I'll be able to do that and then move them into there. So we can we can say they get there and then they disperse. Because they were irregulars, they have that ability uh, to just disperse. Because otherwise we would just chase them with our mechanized units. But I think you know the, we, what what we just done there you know, that is the completion of the games. So we played that game in like less than two minutes. Um, so it's hardly a game, you know, but you know these are sort of annotated, you know, historical accounts so to speak. You know, and that's what that's about. So you might sort of think, well, you know, it's, it's all designed to make you sort of think, well, you know, why don't they put, you know, well, in this instance, we were able to, we were able to, um, to push them out. Then it did some damage. The refugees are too scared to live in their own village. They probably killed a few people in there doing the damage that they did do. But, you know, we've, we've got a situation where the Mozambique government, uh, the Mozambique security forces are at least have forces in the area, but they can't stop them sort of getting in there. So it gives you a sort of, maybe a, an overview as to what's happening. Um, it, it does sort of make you wonder a little bit as to, you know, how security can be achieved in, you know, in, in this, in, in the Cabo de Gado province. Um, and I think one of the things that's key with all of these sorts of areas, when you look at them in Yemen and uh, Syria and Libya, and Nigeria and all these places, the one common factor is that they are just otherwise arguably wastelands. 
Um, you know, I mean, I'm English, obviously, and um, you know, I, I can hardly imagine anything like that happening. You know, even in the, the, the sort of the hilly areas of Wales or Scotland, there's just nothing that's so re remote that we couldn't have, like, you know, the police out there instantly with their armed response units dealing with what intents and purposes probably just a gang with a bunch of guns. Um, you, you know, although we've got you know, a sort of company level icon there, there's probably no more than, say, 20 of them. There might be 50. I think some of, in, in, you know, some of the articles that they you know, count quite a lot of people. But, you know, it's the remoteness of these areas and the undeveloptness and, and the sort of, you know, almost the backwardness of the country that's actually really facilitating these things to happen. Um, you know, even in America, there's just nowhere remote enough that, that you could have these sorts of people driving around in pickup trucks with, you know, 50 cows mounted on the back, firing rocket launchers. It just, you know, there would just be so much of a response. And that's a big difference. And, then, you know, I think, you know, I think, it, you know, I don't want to sound odd or anything, but I think war, war is something that is not really going to happen in the way we always imagined it to. Um, you know, when you look at these, it's just a small sporadic thing and I think as we go forward it will become more and more difficult for anything like this to ever happen I mean this is like the wild west you know they're going through a development period akin to you know the white you know in, in the US wild west and it's probably more akin to some extent I don't know a huge amount about it but you know the Colombian situation you know and their history and of armed groups you know, they're being evolved out of the picture, and I think that, you know, places like Mozambique are just going through a growth curve that's probably going to take, you know, another 50, maybe 50, well, I would say 50 to 100 years, but maybe even in 50 years, you know, they're going to grow, not so much grow out of it like their children, but, you know, as long as we don't have any sort of natural, major natural disasters that take the whole of humanity back, you know, massive steps, like a nuclear war or something, I think they're just going to, you know, they will, they will attain that level of civilization, and will, you know, I use that word deliberately, but what I was want to condition that with is the word authority, you know, law and order. But these situations, you know, won't exist. I mean, it's just really down to the fact that, you know, these are remote areas, um, as we can sort of see from here, you know, getting these units from here to there takes time. You know, committing these units in these sorts of ways um, is it's all fair enough. But even in this scenario, let's if it actually just look at this. Um, let's just well, let's move from there. In this turn, even in this scenario, you need a lot of. This is why I've made regulars as they don't do it. I've only got a few minutes, so I'm gonna have to be quick on this. But the reasons regulars are different to a lot of way war games work. They are very different. They're very powerful. You, you can't just allow these small units, especially the units like the police, to just sort of sit there, you know, covering out. Because you can put one unit there, one unit there, one unit there, one unit there, you know. They can attack them like this. Now, this is only probably going to be a one-to-one. -one. And we lost. But, you know, that was just too bad. Um, but that's because there were a three. But, you know, on a one to one, you can attack them. I mean, that's not terrible odds. They're just a small unit. They're three, you know, these are three times bigger than them. If they were really big, we wouldn't be able to attack them. But we can still attack this mechanized unit. And they are doing things like that. And, you know, so you can't just saturate this area with small little patrol groups because they get attacked. And so it's it's not as simple as it sounds. Um, I mean, let's just make, maybe make another ex point of this. Although we've just lost some power, if we go after this police unit, and this should be a four to one. Yeah. So we we basically attack this police unit. So you know, isolated police units are not very good against these irregular forces. Um, so, you know, you can't just sort of put lots of police there, etc. So hopefully this should give you a bit of a background into the Cabo de Gado situation and the, um, and more in particular, of course, the, um, the Islamist insurgency in Mozambique, which is hardly headline news. 
um, and you go away thinking that you learned something from Warburg, which is the whole point to some extent. Obviously, we'll be learning about the Anglophile crisis and every ever conflict that you can possibly imagine over time. Um, so I hope you sort of pick up on that. Um, I'm trying to up the ante with my presentation, but I don't think I'll ever really get there because um, I only ever do these videos when I've got a few moments. I think, you know, I'm looking at the history guy and I'm pretty sure he plans his videos fairly thoroughly and I don't and I'm not likely to either. It just, it's just hard enough doing what I do as it is, but I am trying to up the ante with regards to say maybe presenting more complete documentary format overviews of things like the Islamic Insurgency in Mozambique that clearly it's hardly sort of like BBC documentary standards um, but you know that is to some extent the intention etc etc so I hope you found that I would say I hope you found that um, well interesting uh, engaging and uh, thought provoking um, I was going to say I hope, hope, you, hope you enjoyed that uh, it seems a little appropriate in many cases, um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that anyway, nonetheless, um, as, as an interesting thing, and I will uh, speak to you later. Cheerio!